but I was grateful for the, the mask because it was hiding the fact that I was having a full blown panic attack in the middle of this choreography rehearsal. I had tears streaming down my face. My mask was here. I lifted it. And I was just like, breathe, just breathe, just keep going, just keep going. But I was like, you will be auditioned for the role of Frankenstein. I was like, okay, just smile and look confident. You're mm. gonna be fine. <laughs> so the show I was in was the Rock and Roll Monster Show. Uh, Monsters Live, it's called. Us boys as Franks, we were like, we can't do half this choreography because we're wearing these six kilo boots. Mm -hmm. What's Japan like? <laughs> Japan's incredible. Then I saw the Universal Studios Japan world tour was starting, which is what they call their uh, yeah, audition yeah. process. And I was like, hey, can you let me know when this comes through to London? Because I'm not going to remember. I'll forget. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, absolutely. So they put me forward for it. I was number 523. Uh, I had to sing Shut Up and Dance With Me mm. by shoot, uh, Walk the Moon, Shoot the Moon. Um, I, I sang that. And I, I also saw on the email that, that they sent, if you are over six foot and you are a baritone bass, mm -hmm. familiarize yourself with Santana Smooth because you will be auditioned for the role of Frankenstein. I was like, okay, cool. They gave me this. They gave me the sheet music for Smooth. They were like, come back in an hour. I was mm. like, cool, no worries. I was like, I already know it, so I'm just gonna go and chill for mm. an hour. So went and chilled, came back, did Smooth in a group audition. Um, then they were like, okay, cool. Those of you who we'd like to stay, come mm. back for the dance audition. Mm. And that was in two hours' time. Okay, cool. So I'll wait around, do that, uh, do the dance audition, which I'm not. I was like, okay, just smile and look confident. You're mm. gonna be fine. <laughs> and I was paired with this guy, James, who I actually ended up working with. He was actually in my cast in Japan, mm. in my show. Uh, and he was a dancer. And I was like, fuck, like, he's really good and I'm not. And I was like, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> anyway, did it. And then they were like, okay, we'd like to see you for the interview. Turned into like an 11 hour audition in the end. It was insane. Oh, really? Yeah. And this was in February. Mm -hmm. And they were like, okay, so this is the first stop on the tour of auditions. We'll let you know by October. Mm. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. like... <laughs> February to October. It's like, all right. All right. I'll yeah. just, I'll just forget about this then. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. do the usual, do the audition, do your best, come out and go, yeah, cool, did that. Now forget about it. And if mm. I get it, I get it. If I don't, I'm not thinking about it. It's fine. Yeah. So I went away. October comes around, I get an email saying, hey, we would like you to, uh, we'd like to offer you a place. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize at the time that what happens is at the end of each contract, they offer places to people at the park yeah. who they want to stay on for another year. Yeah. If they say no, or if anybody gets fired or they gets sent home early, then they get someone in. So in February, I was auditioning for Frankenstein, just general audition. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to actually being offered the job, there's a chance that they might not need anyone. Mm -hmm. So it's not even whether you were right for the job or not, it's whether they actually need anybody for the position. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Luckily for me, somebody had been fired and somebody else wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. So I got an email along with one other guy. And bearing in mind they do London, I think they do Man... No, it's only, it's only London in the UK. And they might do Scotland. Mm. Then they do Australia. They mm. do like three or four stops in Australia and then they do three or four states in America. Yeah. And out of all the, and I was 523. The, was it like a musical or like a theater performance? Was it like, yeah, like so just the a show, big show with? So the show I was in was the Rock and Roll Monster Show. Uh, Monsters Live, it's called. Um, and basically it's, I mean, it's insane. It was insane. I've never seen anything like it because, or I've never performed anywhere yeah. like it. Because this stage is a Broadway sized stage. It is massive. And it's covered in set that looks like a graveyard. There's this giant clock tower. Mm. Uh, there's um, there's loads of different layers Is and levels. Is this kind of like an attraction park? Universal or? Universal, yeah, it's the theme park, yeah. yeah. But uh, Universal are known for their shows. They do a lot yeah. of shows, especially, I think, I think all of them do, actually. Mm. I've only ever been to the one in Japan. I've never yeah. been to the, yeah. the others. Um, but yeah, and it was, the, the show is essentially Beetlejuice throws a party in the graveyard. And Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, uh, the werewolf or Wolfie, um, and Drac, and then these two ch undead cheerleaders, Hip and Hop, who are basically the dancers. Mm. They just have this party in the graveyard and they just sing rock and roll songs and dance. 
and it was great. And me being Frankenstein meant I didn't have to dance. So mm. I was like, this is brilliant because I had a, I was holding a guitar. I had to mind playing the guitar. I had these boots, platform boots that were like this high off the ground. Um, big prosthetic head, green makeup, purple like pleather suit. But I was the skinniest and shortest Frankenstein they'd ever had. I think because mm. the other guys who were playing Frank were like six foot five, built as well, yeah. very muscular guys. And I was like, this is awkward. Luckily, the, the guy was like, yeah, you were hired for your voice. I was like, yeah. well, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's good that I wasn't hired for my look as Frankenstein, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that was great. I was there for 13 months. Frankenstein was difficult in terms of... Technically. Technicality, yeah. Yeah, we did, the, we did a Halloween show, which was outside, and it was a dance show. Mm -hmm. And us boys as Franks, we were like, we can't do half this choreography because we're wearing these six kilo boots. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is impossible. Um, and I actually remember being in a rehearsal with uh, my best mate, Josh, who was a Dracula. And I can't remember if it was the Halloween or the Christmas show. I think it was the Halloween show. But basically, we're, we're dancing in a room, wearing masks mm -hmm. because of COVID. So you're like suffocating whilst dancing. It was like, oh my God, this is difficult. But I was grateful for the, the mask because it was hiding the fact that I was having a full-blown panic attack in the middle of this choreography rehearsal. I had tears streaming down my face, my mask was here, I lifted it, and I was just like, breathe, just breathe, just keep going, just keep going. But I was like, I have full imposter syndrome. I was like, I shouldn't be here. Someone's gonna realize I shouldn't be here and I'm gonna get sent home. Like, I can't dance, this is insane. Even, even the non-dancers are doing better than I am. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And it, we, we went for a break. And I literally just went straight to the, headed for the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I was in the corner of the bathroom, just crying in, the, in these toilets. And my mate came in and was like, dude, I was here last year, it's fine. Like, yeah. you've got this, you're doing so well. And he talked me out and I was like, no, you're right, I can do this. I'm here, I've got this far, I'm in Japan. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I wouldn't be here if they didn't see something. Yeah. So that was very technically difficult for me, especially with dyspraxia and stuff. Yeah. It takes me just a lot longer to learn choreography than most people. Once I had it, I was like, fuck yeah, I'm proud of myself, I'm doing this. Mm. Uh, and that was insane. Nice. I had the time of my life. And I was there during the pandemic. First of all, like, what was, describe me your day. Like, what was your day like? How often did you perform uh, per week? Mm -hmm. uh, what was your day like? How often did you have to, like, rehearse? Did you have free time to go out and, you know, be wild and watch yeah. all the anime? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So rehearsals started basically the day after we landed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fuck jet lag, you just straight in. Yeah. It's like, here we go. Uh, and that was 10, 10, 12 hour days, long days of, of yeah. rehearsals, dance calls, singing, the lot. And it, it, you'd start with singing, then finish with dance in the afternoon or mm -hmm. the night. Or you do a full day of singing, then do a few mm -hmm. weeks of dance and what have you, trying to get all the choreography ready. Then, a couple of weeks before you debut the show. Obviously, there's another team doing the shows as well. So you're in an off-site unit, basically, in a studio mm -hmm. rehearsing. Then during the days, you'd come in first thing in the morning or late at night in the actual theater and do dress runs, perform and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's very technical. You've got to be in a lot of different places. It's not just the, it's not just the choreography and the singing you've got to remember. You've got to be... Uh, in your positions backstage and like Dracula comes down from the ceiling at one point and so he's got to run up like five, six flights of stairs, get rigged up at the top in time after the last song to get up there and then drop down for his song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have to like sprint off stage and then run downstairs to get to uh, a basement elevator that mm. shoots you up through the stage through yeah. pyrotechnics for my song and, so, and it's like there's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts involved. Um, but in terms of then when we debuted, uh, funnily, I actually debuted my show and then the next day we were in doing notes and they were like, right, everybody go home, everybody back to your, back to your flat. And we were like, what? They were like, parks closed until further notice. Ugh. And that was pandemic. And we were like, fuck. Because we went out there right at the beginning of it. We went to, we, we stopped at Hong Kong airport on the way yeah. there and everybody was masked up. There wasn't much distancing happening mm -hmm. at this point because no one knew what it was but it felt very apocalyptic everywhere. Yeah, it was a bit like, oh, this is weird. People were just generally a bit scared and a bit mm. on edge. Uh, yeah, so then three weeks later, three or four weeks later, we just, yeah, we shut the park down. But while we were working, because it was a weird one, 
obviously it was a bit different compared to what it would have been every other year. But mm -hmm. in terms of a weekly basis, when we reopened the park and when we were back, we would work, you'd get a day and a half off. Um, in terms of shows, you would do anywhere between one and five shows a day. How, how many how many Frankenstein's did you like? How many people so did you would, have per per role? Yeah, so there were four Frank there were four Franks, four teams, I think. Yeah. Or well, no, three teams plus a swing. Mm -hmm. So you'd have three different casts. Yeah. Plus then an extra person for swinging on each role. The group performs as a group uh, all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or you occasionally, yeah. Occasionally you'd be mixed up if mm -hmm. if somebody was ill or yeah. if somebody had booked the day off or they'd swap days with other people. Mm -hmm. You'd occasionally work with other people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you would yeah you'd have your three casts. Your predominant cast. Mine was Kendra Darcy. Uh, James and then the twins, Tiana and Lindsay, and me. And then Taka was our Beetlejuice. The Beetlejuices were, Jap were Japanese, mm. everybody else was Western performers. It was yeah. either British, American, or Australian. And we all lived together in one big block of flats. It was like 108 of us mm -hmm. in a block of flats. So mm. when it came to pandemic and lockdown, which Japan didn't really do because yeah. they wanted to do the Olympics still, uh, <laughs> they were like, ah, there's, there's no. So what are you talking about? There's no COVID here. <laughs> yeah. like, what? what are you talking yeah, about? They're in China. It's this yeah, yeah. It's fine. Um, no, we're not going to test anyone for it either. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> it was, there was a lot of that going on. Um, but yeah, so you do you do between one to kind of five shows a day, um, depending on how busy it was and depending on how many people were in that day. And the show's like 45 minutes long, I think. Mm -hmm. um, which is a, a decent kind of time for a, a show to happen in a, a theme park, you know. Mm. And then yeah, you'd get you'd get it was either one and a half or two days. It might have been two days off, but they weren't always back to back, and they weren't you know. Yeah. They, they would move around a lot, which was which was nice because I mean you could do different things. So how long how long were you rehearsing before you started uh, performing? So I think it was uh, I think it was like two. It was either two or three weeks. Two or three weeks, and then when you started performances, did you still rehearse before you perform? The or no? Yeah, the yeah. first kind of month of performances, we would do. Uh, we'd perform, then we'd have notes, yeah. feedback. We'd be brought in for, you know, making sure everything was tight. Mm -hmm. They were really, really on the happening. Yeah, like, yeah, right, your 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 arm is slightly here, whereas yeah. that person's arm is here. We need to fix that, and it's yeah. you know the level of of. Uh, choreography and things is, is great. I mean, they get world class people in to, to uh, be the MD and mm. choreographer as well. I mean, I, I, I'm not big in my choreography world or dancers, yeah. but I know some of the dancers were very like, oh, that's that's Michelle Sharman. Like, oh my God, she's worked with XYZ. And mm. I was like, I, I don't know. She's a lovely, lovely choreographer. But when mm. I first got there, I was like, I don't know who this is. However, the MD uh, was the MD for Postmodern Jukebox, who for me, I was like, holy crap. Mm. I was like, I love postmodern jukebox. Mm. Like this guy is like one of my heroes, and yeah. like I got to work with him, and yeah. it was insane. That for me was wild. I was like, oh my god. But yeah, aside from the lockdown and pandemic having a bit of an effect with travel, so yeah. like, I wanted to go to Fuji, I wanted to go to Tokyo, but when it got round to actually going there, it just so happened I had tickets to go to Disney Sea in Tokyo and mm. take a long weekend in Tokyo. Yeah, and then. Uh, we got travel restrictions put on. No, I, was like, course, yeah. I was like, it's been fine this entire time and mm. now you're putting a travel restriction. Uh, but I did get to go to Kyoto. I saw the bamboo forest in the snow. I climbed mm. Mount Arashiyama, saw the macaques and mm. it was just, yeah, it was phenomenal. We were in Osaka, which food mm. capital of Japan. It was, yeah, All getting right. ramen 24 hours. Oh. A uh, ramen at like 3 a.m. You'd be like, yeah, oh. let's go, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. great, it was yeah, great. Sounds, sounds yeah. great. What, like, what? What's Japan like? <laughs> Japan's incredible. Yeah. 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 The people are so, so welcoming, so mm. hospitable. They will go out of their way to make yeah. sure that you are comfortable. Mm. You know, um, everything is about respect. Yeah. Everything is, you know, um, the work ethic is interesting. Yeah. Western performers were treated with very much a, oh, no, it's OK. Don't worry. That's fine. <laughs> Oh, you messed that? That's all right. Don't worry. Just don't do it. Just don't do it again. Yeah. You're like, okay. Japanese performers were, what the fuck was that? It was like tore into if they yeah. were slightly off. It was like, really? and they would be rehearsing day in, day out while the rest of us are like, 
oh, all right, cool. I'll, I'll work on that for an hour and then I'll yeah, really? go to the bar. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Japan is very much a, a country that is, there, there was a saying we had and it was, because Japan. Yeah. <laughs> And it was like, why, 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 why is this done like this? Because Japan makes sense. And it's like, you know, this is the way they've done it forever. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Why change it? And yeah. you're like, okay, but things like their banking systems haven't changed in 20 years. Yeah. Like, online banking was an absolute nightmare. You have to have a stamp uh, for like a little pay book thing it was I, I didn't understand it you had to go to the bank with a with a little stamp and if you didn't have the stamp you couldn't get money and it was like what it was, it was weird but yeah things like that were like uh, that's i don't weird understand. because I, don't, I, don't, I always thought that like japan is very very technically advanced advanced yeah they have holographic shopping tills so that you don't have to press anything you just point at the hologram self-service checkouts with holograms man really yeah Yeah, yeah, and you just you just go and you're like cool. You don't have to actually touch anything. Oh, okay. Uh, but where where are you well taken care of there? Yes. Yeah. So like uh, you were paid. Uh, by the way, if it's not a secret, how much mm. did, did they pay? It was it was enough that had I been sensible with my money, <laughs> I could have come home and I uh, like put a deposit on a house sort of thing. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. basically, like, while while you lived there, like, I think I came home with fifteen thousand. All right. Which is fifteen thousand five hundred more than I went out there with. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, but I did I did spend a lot of money traveling and experiencing because I was I was planning on staying for two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, but then like, because of the pandemic, they were like, we need to cut the costs in half. And at that yeah. point, I was like, well, I'm not staying because I'm skinny and short and I'm I've got type 1 diabetes yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the insurance is going to go up every year that I'm there so and basically so while, while you will uh, you were living there uh, so the stay was paid right like the, you didn't have bed and board to, yeah well bed you get you get your own flat yeah which is like it's a west they call it a western room a mm -hmm. western flat so it's not like a, a Japanese style uh, mm -hmm. accommodation So it was like one room, it was like a student kind of apartment. We, we were always out and about and mm. they were big enough to have friends around. So when we were yeah. locked down, we were allowed a maximum of 10 people in our rooms. Well, yeah. I was like, dude, I can't fit 10 people yeah. in my room, but like <laughs> five people comfortably. Yeah. I had my own bar in there that I'd set up and stuff. Yeah. And like I had my PlayStation, my yeah. Switch, my laptop. And, uh, and then you have the, the little kind of kitchenette and then a toilet with a wet room attached that yeah. had a huge tub. The first bathtub, as a six foot one person, a bathtub big enough for me to sit in with enough room at the end for my feet. There was like this much room at the end of the bath <laughs> and I'd be up to my neck and it was so deep that's, that you could just have the water really overflowing as well because it was a wet room. So you were just like, this is fun. This is amazing. It sounds great. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have that here. <laughs> no, right, exactly. <laughs> and uh, did the Did they feed you as well? Uh, so we did have like on-site cafeteria and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, that was super cheap, mm -hmm. super, super cheap. Um, but Japan for eating in general, I mean, Japan is expensive to live if you're not working there. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we got, we got our flats covered. We had a, a ticket for the train, which was our official route to work was mm -hmm. the train but it mm -hmm. was double the length of the ferry yeah so the ferry you would cycle we all got given bikes as well mm -hmm. because it's the best way to get around you'd cycle for like five minutes from the accommodation to the ferry mm -hmm. but the ferry would only run certain times and also if the it was a tiny little like chug boat thing like this mm -hmm. little go 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 And if the wind was too high or whatever, it wouldn't run. Or if the weather was too bad, it wouldn't run. Sometimes yeah. it would break down in the middle of the river and drift off towards Hawaii. And you'd be like, great, where the fuck are we going now? <laughs> so they were like, look, the ferry isn't reliable enough to be your official route. So if you were late from the ferry, it was your own fault. So mm. they gave you a free train ticket, which went further than work as well. So you could get to Kyoto, I think, for free mm. and back. Um, or at least definitely to Dotonbori, which is like the big shopping kind of capital mm. of, uh, the, the center bit of, of osaka and yes yeah, so the, all that was covered all that was paid for um you had your wi-fi you also had a japanese phone for work purposes mm -hmm. which i thought i was being clever and i linked my wi-fi from the phone to my phone yeah <laughs> and then after the first month they were like 
uh, you got a bill of 20,000 yen. And I was like, how much is it? It's like 200 quid. All right. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's uh, 2,000 yen. I was like, I'm sorry, what? They were like, yeah, that's for your Wi-Fi. And I was like, oh, fuck. They were like, you linked it to your phone, didn't you? And I was like, yeah. They were like, you're not the first. You won't be the last, but you owe us money. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, I won't, I won't do that again. I was like, thanks for warning me beforehand. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it, it seemed like a, such a smart and original idea. Yeah, exactly. I was like, no one's ever done this before, right? And no, I've never heard anybody get in trouble from it, so I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> no trouble, you just spend yeah, money. Yeah, I'm spending money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>